Good morning and happy Easter to you. It is good to have all of you joining us in this new way. It has been an absolute blessing. And I get to do something that I truly never expected I'd get to say um, doing videos like this, certainly not a month ago. But I want to say hello to our friends joining us in Florida, uh, Texas, Ohio, yeah, all the way down there, and in two different spots in Canada, and of course, all of you in Michigan. Um, it is really cool that this has spread so far geographically. It is neat how God is using this current difficulty in the world to spread his word. And if ever there was a time when his word needed spread, it's now, especially on Easter Day. So I'm going to say it again at the end, but I would like to kind of put a challenge out there, an invitation to all of you. If this is something that you hear today that would benefit someone else, if there's someone that God puts on your heart that you would like to share this with, please do. Please take the link, give it to them, send it via email, share on Facebook. We'll have this posted still today. And let's see if God will put this in the hands of the people that need it, wherever or whatever country they're in. Thank you for being with us, and may God richly bless you this day. As is our tradition, we have a phrase which I invite you to share with us, and as I say it today, you're going to hear other people have videotaped themselves joining us. We say on Easter boldly, I say, He is risen, and I invite you when you hear that to say, He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. And with that, we begin our time together, our service in the very name in which we have life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I invite you, as we continue our time together this morning, that you would join me. As we start by first humbling ourselves before God, as we are called to do each and every day, going to God and saying that we are sinners and we are blessed to be forgiven by him. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we might delight in your will, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. It is my privilege to remind you that each and every day we are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ and by his blood shed on the cross. Because Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. I therefore remind you of this forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter. Some of you might remember last year we had a special guest trumpet player, Ray Novak. He was all set to come again this year until, well, so I had the idea of including him by way of a video from his own home. This led me to the idea of inviting several of my talented friends to send me a video as well, and many of them responded. So the introduction to our first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, features seven awesome instrumentalists. Special thanks to Brian and Amy, Jonathan, Jan, Linda, John, and of course Ray, who will kick it off. Once they're done, it's your turn to sing.
And as we did last week, I'd like to try something a little different for a children's message time, where I can hopefully offer you some guidance to talk to the kids in the room if they're with you. If you do have some littler ones in your, in, in your room with you, go ahead, pause it at, in a moment, spend a little time and talk to them. If not, feel free after this to just keep going. What I'd like you to share with them is, if you're comfortable doing so, maybe a time when you were afraid, you had fear, and then tell them what made you feel safe again. Because what we're about to hear um, in our reading is that people were going to find Jesus' body, they were terrified, and yet they had joy because Christ was risen. I know for me, sometimes I would be afraid playing around in a cornfield. I'm from Ohio. And at my grandpa's house, it would always be when I found grandpa, I knew I was safe. So if you have a similar story, I invite you to share it now with the kids in the room. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I'm Cecilia Seamus, and I go to LCOL with my family for the 815 service. Happy Easter to all of you. The reading today is Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so af afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Ah, oh, it's a good Easter. It's an, a new Easter unlike any that's come before it. 
but Christ is indeed risen. And I'd like to start today by asking you two questions. The first one of the two questions is this, question one. When you think of Easter, what emotion do you think of or do you experience? Do you have joy? Maybe comfort? Maybe you feel the satisfaction of victory or maybe just peace. Those are good. Those are right because we are Christians and Christ is indeed alive for us this day. He has given us the victory and promised us peace. But what about fear? Do you ever connect fear and Easter together? Talk about that in a second. Second question I want to ask you is this. What emotion do you have when you think of the future as it looks now? What emotion do you have at this time of seclusion and coronavirus worries? What emotion did you have when you were at a funeral of someone you loved dearly? Or when you or someone you love fights fights cancer or sickness or disease or pain, how do you feel? How do you feel when you're depressed or lonely? Now, I cheated because that was like eight questions. So let me wrap it up into one. I'm asking, how do you feel when life is hardest? On the hardest day of your life, what do you feel? Maybe fear? Maybe you're worried? Maybe you're lost or angry? Maybe you feel just lost and out of control. What about joy? Do you connect joy with that memory? Does that sound odd? Does it sound as odd to you as asking if you connect Easter with fear as saying joy with the worst day of your life? Well, let me me get to something here. There's an interesting thing in Scripture that is really easy to miss, miss on Easter morning because on Easter, we come in ready to party. We are Christians. We have a risen Lord. We are redeemed, forgiven, and promised eternal life. And so that joy that we feel this morning can actually hide some of the details in the story. The Easter story that we just heard. And that interesting thing that sometimes we just fly right over is this. That every normal human in the story, which means not the angel and not Jesus. He's human. He's just a little bit special. But every normal person in the resurrection story in Scripture is terrified. In fact, starting after Jesus' burial, all the stories include people who feel fear in their hearts. They spend their first moments with Jesus being risen from the dead, terrified. Let's actually review our reading today and I'll hopefully show you how they feel. So our story begins right with two ladies, both who are conveniently named Mary. And they're going to the tomb of Jesus to find the body of Jesus. They want to get there before he starts to smell. And on the way, we're not sure where at in their travel, but the ground starts shaking. An ear-splitting rumble tears through the ground and the air around them. And they find when they get to the tomb that it is open. The giant rock, too heavy for them to move, is moved to the side. And seated on it is an angel of the Lord. Now, this has already been a bit of a disconcerting Easter morning for these fine ladies. If you've ever been through a tornado or an earthquake of any significance, and thankfully I haven't, but the reports when you talk to people, or if you've been through one, is that it is just deafening and terrifying. 
to know that there is so much power that we have no control over. I'm told it causes fear. But oh no, we're not done with this story yet. We just started, actually. Because see, I mentioned the angel of the Lord just sitting on the stone as if it was nothing. But it was not nothing. See, the angel, which was perched so victoriously on the stone that he had moved, is indescribable. Literally, it is unable for human words of any period of time, even God-inspired words written and spoken by Matthew into this gospel, to describe effectively what that thing looked like. But Matthew tries. He says the appearance of this creature, this angel, was like lightning. And his robe was like a perfect white snow. Now let your imagination run wild. And maybe use me as a starting point. See, I and many other pastors wear these robes routinely because they're a reminder of the holiness, the radiance of our transfigured Lord Jesus Christ and the host of heaven. But clearly, our human ability stops right here, right? This is not white as snow, it is white. And this is sure pretty cool, someone made this a while ago, but it's not lightning. And even though my son thinks I'm pretty fast, I'm just a guy. And I don't look like lightning at all. Whatever that even means. This thing caused fear. Fear on Easter morning. In fact, there are six verses left in our reading today, and the word fear will show up four more times. Because this whole situation they are in is truly terror-inducing. Matthew goes on and he tells us about the guys who pulled the short straw, the guards watching the tomb. He literally says they were all shook up and frozen as if dead by fear. Fear had seized them and they were comatose. And that angel, you know the one that looks like lightning? He opens his mouth, and the first thing he says to the women, to Mary and Mary, is, Do not fear. He has to start that way, because this is terrifying. And he is terrifying. But he continues talking. And here's where we get that Easter good news. He says to those women that you are here seeking Jesus, seeking a body. But he's not here. He is risen, he tells them. He's risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the angel instructs the ladies then to go quickly. Find the other disciples, those men who follow Jesus so closely, and tell them the good news. And so the angel gives them hope, gives them joy, and he instructs them to go quickly. Now, I asked you earlier, what emotion did you connect personally with the idea of Easter, Easter morning? Because for those first Christians, for those ladies, and soon to be for those disciples, and certainly for those poor guards, they felt Fear, trembling, and awe at the majesty that they were a part of. Yeah, joy and understanding is going to come, but not in the story yet. Let's keep going with verse 8. See, in verse 8, Scripture says they leave quickly, these two women. And then it tells us this, and, and hear this, right? They leave with fear. Fear and great joy. In their hearts were two emotions. Fear and joy as they go. 
And then finally, Jesus appears to these women. He meets with them and he will say one more time, do not be afraid. Do not fear. But they've already bowed down on the ground and began worshiping Jesus at his feet. And it feels to me that Jesus is not telling them, do not fear in the same way the angel does, because they have already spontaneously from their joy began to worship Jesus. It comes after. And I think that this is a gift to them from Jesus for their future. See, Easter morning, something new happened that had never happened before, will never happen since, and it was something that utterly changed not just the lives of those women, but the entire world in which they and we exist. That's a scary idea. That's where a lot of the fear comes from today. Not knowing what tomorrow looks like. And Jesus was telling them, do not fear. Because I am with you right now. He tells them I'm risen. And that's good news. I think scripture shows us that Easter is full of both joy and fear. It was for the disciples of Christ that very morning. It was for the women who approached the tomb. And I think that's good. I think it's good because that's how life still is today. Yeah, we're 2,000 years away, but this Easter morning, I don't think a lot has changed. At least as far as being a disciple of Jesus Christ goes. You know, let me put it this way. I wish that we could say right now, since it is Easter morning, that you know what? We're done. Let's act like everything is normal. Meet me at church. Bring a potluck. I'll grab some plates because I don't cook much. And we're going to throw a party. I wish we could do that. I wish we could just declare it done because we have joy in our hearts. You know, I, I wish we could just remove the fear of disease and death, and I wish that we Christians could live our perfect lives right now. Yeah, I'm waiting for Jesus to come back, and so are you, but what if we just acted like it right now instead of waiting? What if we tried to live without fear of failure? Without fear of the future and what it holds in its mystery? Without fear of our families and relationships being broken. Without fear or anxiety. But we can't. It's tempting. But we can't. It's not how it works. And pretending won't help. Because pretending just ignores the other truth that we have joy right now. There is joy. Jesus is risen. Yes. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus came to earth. He came to this place of fear and worry, pain and sickness, and he became like us. He became one of us. He dwelt here amongst us. And now Jesus lives again. He's still here. He's still with you right now. And he's certainly still risen this very Easter morning. And Jesus is here amidst the fear. He's here amidst the, the, the dangers of the world. And into this situation, he brings Joy eternal. He brings light into the darkness through his own presence and his own resurrection. 
Easter is a day of fear, but incredible joy. And that is good because there are two things that are true. Right now, it is true that the world is not all right. If it were, we would be a little bit closer. We'd be in the same room right now as a church family. So that's true. That's something we have right now that can cause fear. But the other thing that is just as true is that right now, Christ is risen and alive and is present with us, his disciples. He's here, and he's still our Lord, whatever goes on around us. See, whatever gives you fear, worry, maybe pain, there is no shame in that reality. That's the world we live in. And pretending like it's not there won't help. And there's not much we can do about it right now. You are normal. But also know that you are never alone. You have Christ in your life and he is your joy in the midst of fear, in the midst of worry, and in the midst of pain. He is your promised salvation and Jesus alone is eternal. And fear, pain, they have an end date where Jesus does not. The beauty of Easter is not only in that we get this day, this morning, as a church, as a redeemed people, to celebrate, to party, to have joy in our hearts. A time when we remember that Jesus rose for you and for me and for this world so that he might give us eternal life. That's good. But the true beauty, the beauty of Easter, is the Easter morning when that tomb was opened and Jesus walked out marked a new reality for every day to follow. For every day, including today, tomorrow, whatever's happening in June, whatever's going on in August, and even December, Jesus is risen. Easter is real And I want to share with you what I heard one pastor say. He said once that we Christians are Easter people. That yeah, we have this big day for celebration, but every morning we wake up, Easter is real for you. Christ is still risen. And so tomorrow, there might be fear. There might be pain in your life. But the one thing I can guarantee is that Jesus will be there and he will bring joy to you. Because tomorrow, and there is a tomorrow, Jesus is still risen. And he still holds you. This is why I asked you at the beginning those two questions. About the emotions that we feel on Easter and the emotions we feel on the worst day of our life. And I said, what about joy on the worst day? Because it's one thing to say that Jesus is alive now and tomorrow. But even on the worst day of your life, with whatever hardship you were feeling, or whatever day is still waiting for you, there is joy on that day. Because Jesus is there too. That's what Easter really means. It means that we have a Lord who is risen right now, tomorrow, and on the worst day of our lives, he is still our God. Joy right there amidst the sadness. Joy amidst fear. And joy amidst disease. We have. Jesus. Now, tomorrow, forever. Because Jesus 
is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Now I invite you to join with me in saying the Apostles' Creed as a bold declaration of our joy that we share as Christians. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I invite you to join me in prayer as we go to our Father and ask him to be with us in this time, but also certain individuals who you will hear. Let's pray. Father, we pray to you because your Son is indeed risen from the dead. He is our Savior. You have given him new life, and with him we have life eternal. Lead us always to follow him, to walk in your ways, and to share this good news. So that all the people who live in fear without joy would know that there is joy in Jesus and their situation right now. Lord, please, we ask you also to guide the leaders of this world and of our state and guide all the, the circumstances around the coronavirus that it would be treated well, handled quickly, that we all might return to normal and few people would be injured or die from it. We ask you also, Father, to be with Lyle and Marjean Angerer, with Stephanie Murray, with Matt Harvey, with Danny and Judy, 
and with the New York Police Department as so many officers have been diagnosed with the virus. Father, we especially raise up and trust in you in these times when there are so many people whose jobs are being disrupted. As layoffs increase, we trust in you to provide all that we need. Father, for these and all other worries and blessings that you have laid on our heart, we give them to you, knowing that you are the one who brings joy into all situations. We pray to you, Lord. Amen. Now I invite you, if you would, please to join me as we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now I'd like an opportunity to remind you as we end our time together of the blessing that the Lord has promised to give you and be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you everyone for joining us for this Easter celebration in a very special different time. Um, I again ask you, as I did at the beginning, Pray and consider sharing this. I hope it's worth sharing. God continues to do amazing things that I've heard from you guys about, and I know many of you are sharing them, and I am humbled that that is a thing God has chosen to do. So if you know someone who needs a reminder that in the midst of fear we have Christian joy, I invite you to share it with them. Maybe give them a call. Lots of people could use a call nowadays. I'd also like to let you know that there is an update letter coming out Soon, to let you know what's happened the last month, now that we can see this is going to go on longer. Um, It's going to share with you all the exciting things and let you know financially how we are doing. But let me just say thank you again. We continue to be a blessed people financially because God has blessed you and put it in your hearts to support his church. I don't know what else to say, but thank you. Thank you and thank you, God. Um... I want to share with you, lastly, an email that I received, and I asked her if I could share this. Um, It's a a lady who does not attend our church, but this is kind of one of those amazing things that God is doing as he expands our, our community of friends and fellow believers. She writes this, Just a little note to say thank you for your sermons online and videos. Not being able to attend my normal church has been a struggle. I have watched you the last three weeks, And just wanted to say thank you for the encouragement through this crisis that our world is facing. When we started this, we were just trying to bring church. God is doing amazing things through you, through technology. And I know that this Easter, God truly is God and he is with you always. May he continue to bless you. Please let us know if there is anything we can do for you or pray for you about. May you go in his peace. Amen.